In this video, we're flying what subscribers to this channel have described as the world's best business class. It'll be my first time in the Q-Suite, Qatar Airways' industry-leading business class, and we've picked one heck of a trip to try it out on. Welcome to the first video in a series we're calling our Newlywed World Tour. You see, we're two tremendous aviation enthusiasts, and we just got married. So to celebrate our honeymoon, we strung together several ultimate aviation experiences into one African adventure that took us from the United States to Kenya, the Seychelles, and Egypt. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeff Brooks from Greenergrass.com, and this is Suzanne. We just got married, and would you believe we've never flown with Qatar Airways? Dallas to Doha. Let's go. Washington's Dulles International Airport is a stunning structure and is the perfect place to kick off a flight like this one. And quite a flight it was. Our departure was 9 p.m. and we were due to arrive into Doha about 5 p.m. local time. We'd reached 41,000 feet, covering almost 7,000 miles over more than 12 hours. This, in my mind, puts it solidly in a category beyond long haul. This is a 12 hour, 35 minute flight or so. And I guess the question is, how long is an ultra long flight? For me, it's about a 12 hour flight. I feel like that's the cutoff, but let me know in the comments, what's an ultra long haul flight for you? And being back here, preparing for such a long, epic flight was something I had longed for for a long time. It felt so right. We checked in and soon made our way through to gate A25, where our Airbus A350-1000 was parked, waiting to return to Doha with us. Business class passengers on board Qatar flights from Dulles are invited to visit the Turkish lounge, and we'll check it out in just a bit. But because we were extremely early, like three hours early, we opted to visit the British Airways lounge first, which we were able to enter because we had one world business class tickets. It was quite busy as the early Heathrow departure was nearing. It's a nice space, upstairs at Dulles, which means sweeping views of the ramp. After a short stop in there, we then headed to our old favorite, the Turkish Lounge, where we had a quick and light bite. You gotta save room for that dine-on-demand food. From there, it was time to board, and before long, I found myself tucked into a seat, 9A, that can only be described as spectacular. I selected a rear-facing seat because, uh, well, why not? Qatar has said their business class is so good, there's no need for first class, and this ultra-long-haul flight is going to be a great opportunity to put that to the test. But as far as first impressions go, <laughs> this was really impressive. The seat is well laid out with plenty of buttons, adjustments, and other features to make a flight comfortable and pleasant. There's even a door. The seat is endlessly adjustable. There's a well-placed universal plug, a credit card point that seemed without purpose, along with a touchscreen remote control, and plenty of storage under the screen in front. We also had amenity kits, extra masks, and a pillow waiting for us. Flight attendants presented pajamas as well. And as if that weren't enough, a flight attendant quickly appeared with a glass of champagne. Suzanne and I had chosen each to take window seats on this flight because we figured we'd get some sleep, get some rest. On the next flight, we'll try the middle seats and I'll show those a little later in the flight. That's uh, able to lay out as a double bed. Pretty cool. Our flight time today is uh, 12 hours and uh, 15 minutes, one five. We'll be reaching a cruising altitude of 41,000 feet. We're expecting to any good weather condition on route. However, we may experience some light turbulence during the, the crossing of the Atlantic, so please keep your simple class at all time. I wish you a very pleasant journey on board of this Cadaverous flight. So thank you very much for your attention and welcome aboard. After a short taxi, we arrived at the runway and soon left the ground behind, right on time, about 9 p.m. Once we were in the air, I opened Oryx One, Qatar's in-flight entertainment. They boast some 3,000 options. So many options that sorting through them proved challenging. But it was impossible not to be impressed. There's literally something for everyone, and the screen was large, bright, and responsive. I also checked out the internet. 
one hour of access for free was available. It was fast. And as we made our way past Baltimore, I settled in and began thinking about dinner. Service began less than 30 minutes after takeoff. Suzanne came over to model the pajamas. Feel free to pause the video here or head over to greenergrass.com slash menus to spend more time with the options. Qatar offers an industry-leading dine-on-demand service, which meant Suzanne just went straight to bed, and then I was able to stay up and eat. I pulled out the tray table and readied myself for dinner. I had the soup, which was followed by the chicken kapsa. Both were rich in flavor. After dinner, I went straight to sleep and enjoyed a solid eight hours of, frankly, the best sleep I've ever had on a plane. Now, whether this was because I was tired from our wedding weekend, the comfort of the A350's cabin, or the well-designed Q suite, I can't really say. But regardless of the cause, as I woke up over Greece, I was grateful we had another three hours of flying to go. It's worth noting, on these longer flights, mattress pads are available and flight attendants will even set your bed up for you. I did not take advantage of that service, though. I stretched my legs with a walk through the A350-1000 cabin. This airplane has 281 economy seats arranged in a 3-3-3 configuration. They each have 31 to 32 inches of pitch and 16.9 to 17.4 inches of width. There are 46 closed suites in business class with 79 inch long beds and 21 and a half inches of width arranged in a 1-2-1 configuration. The bedding was nice too. And the amenity kit contained everything you'd expect. Now, I would have liked to have had a toothbrush in here, but they were available in the bathrooms, so I can't complain too much. Like most of Qatar's passengers, we were connecting in Doha. In our case, we were heading on to Nairobi, a trip of just under five hours. We used this shorter flight to try out the middle seats, which can convert to a double bed. We found the space to be even more comfortable than the window seats for us. On shorter legs like this one, passengers, even in queue suites, can't expect to get amenities like pajamas. An hour, honey. In fact, the amenity kit on these shorter trips is even pared down. But back to the longer trip from Dulles to Doha. As we passed by Crete, where I'd been just a few weeks before, I was ready for some coffee and breakfast. My door was open, but it did take almost an hour for a flight attendant to stop by. Now, to be fair, I did not ring the flight attendant call button. The time went quickly, though, as we passed over a part of the world I'd never seen before. I ordered the omelet and have nothing but positive things to say about it. Breakfast is usually a toss-away meal for an airline, and that's because it's so tough to get it right on board. But Qatar nailed it. This was so good, I'd have it on the ground. Without a doubt, it's the best breakfast I've had on an airplane since flying with Hawaiian Airlines. We'll be starting on the Salim to Doha shortly. Thank you for choosing the Qatar Airways uh, award winning airline. And uh, once again, thank you very much for your attention and have a nice afternoon. I think it makes sense to reflect on the flight. And as always, that means it's time for the Jeb score. In this unsystematic system, we'll rate five factors on a scale of zero to five stars in order to completely subjectively compare this flight against other ones I've taken. We'll look at the lounge, the seat, the food, the in-flight entertainment, and the service. First, the lounge. Qatar does not have its own lounge at Dulles, and instead passengers are able to access the Turkish Airlines lounge. It's nice, although not nearly as nice as it once was. This lounge earns three stars. Now you won't be surprised to learn the lounges in Doha are a whole lot better, and I'll share some scenes from there in a future video, so be sure not to miss the rest of this newlywed world tour. The seat is one of the places where Qatar really shines. They designed what I think could reasonably be called the best business class seat in the sky. 
Now, I'm ordinarily not a fan of doors on seats. I just don't think they're that necessary, but this one worked well. The layout of the seat is logical and accessible, and perhaps most importantly, the chair is really comfortable, both as a seat and as a bed. The middle seats were really comfortable for us as a couple on a daytime flight, and the windows offered a nice privacy during the night. This seat is solidly five stars. The food was quite nice. There was plenty of it. Maybe that was the most distinctive thing. There was just always a lot of food. But being able to get it on our own schedule was really nice. It allowed Suzanne to go to bed when she wanted to instead of having to flex to the airline schedule. Everything had great flavors. This was five-star food. The in-flight entertainment was voluminous. The screen was nice, but it was not easy to find something a second time. If I stumbled across something I wanted to watch, I needed to pick it then because I wouldn't be able to find it a second time. Perhaps there is a search feature somewhere, but I couldn't find it, which led to endless scrolling. While I was impressed with the system, I also struggled with the interface a bit. I, I struggle with what to say, but I'm going with four stars here. There's no doubt you can find something to watch, but when you find it, you better commit to it, because you might not find it again. Finally, the service. I cannot imagine how hard it is to be a flight attendant on Qatar Airways. With nearly 50 business class passengers, each with their own dine-on-demand schedule, I mean, that's that puts a strain on any system. Sure, I had a delay to get my breakfast, but again, these are some of the hardest working cabin crew I've ever seen. And all of my interactions with them were positive and they were eager to help. All in, this was a five-star crew. So that leaves Qatar's Dulles to Doha service on the A350-1000 with 22 out of a possible 25 stars. Was this business class more like first class? Well, I don't quite think so. Yeah, there's Dine on Demand and it's a great seat but it's hard to ignore the fact that I was just one passenger out of 50 in the cabin. And I feel like first class is really about the exclusivity of a small cabin, but keep watching this channel and specifically this Newlywed World Tour series for even more first class content. But most importantly, what did you think? Be sure to leave your impressions in the comments below. And as always, between now and the next time, see you in the sky.